So what you're going to need is obviously a new battery. You're going to need the game itself and you're going to need a Game Boy to be testing it on. You're also going to need some flux. You're going to need a screwdriver with a game bit and you're going to need some tweezers and some solder. Obviously you're also going to need a soldering iron as well. So I'm just going to quickly demonstrate here that this copy of uh, Pokemon Gold has no ability to save the game or to retain the save anyway. So you can see when I boot it up, um, I get the option for new game. So I'm going to go ahead and just start a new game, run through it and then do a quick save. So I'm just going to do a quick save here. And then once it's done, I'm going to turn the Game Boy off, take out the game cartridge and then let it sit for a minute or two and then we'll pl plug it back in and uh, well you can pretty much guess that the uh, game save is going to have disappeared and we won't get any option to start the game or continue the game from the previous save so you can see there straight back into new game so what you're going to want to do is grab your game bit this is a G 3.8, 3.8 millimeters. That's the size of the screw on the back of this game cartridge. And then once the screw's removed, you can then flip over the game cartridge and the front should just slide off. And then that will reveal the PCB inside, which is free to just be removed. So I'm just gonna do a quick test using a multimeter on the original battery. So I'm gonna set it to voltage mode and I'm just gonna to touch the two solder points just to test the current voltage of this battery. Now obviously it's dead, but we are reading a very low voltage of 0.036. Um, what you should be reading there is between 3.3 and 3.1. Um, you can see here on this replacement battery, I read 3.146. So this has actually lost a little bit of charge um, mainly because when it was shipped to me, it was shipped in a bag with, with a bunch of others um, and they shouldn't be stored like that, but here we are. So I've got a second one here. This reads 3.3, so that's a much better uh, reading that I'm gonna use this one instead. So to start with, I'm gonna put some flux onto the solder joints just either side of the battery terminal. And then grab my soldering iron and just add in a bit of new solder to mix in with the old solder to make it a bit easier to uh, melt and then obviously pry the tab free. I'm then gonna grab my tweezers and just stick uh, one of the legs underneath the battery to then provide some resistance or to provide some assistance to push up on the battery and then lift one of the legs away from the solder so you can see here once it's melted it very easily comes away and then we'll just let the solder dry and then to do the same for the other side so melt the flux add in a bit of fresh solder and then grab your tweezers and then this should easily remove and then just set it to the side So once the battery has been removed, I would recommend using some solder braid to wick up some of the old solder, um, just to make sure that we've got this these pads nice and clean, ready to accept the new solder that we put down for when we replace uh, the battery. So now at this point, I'm going to use some IPA with a cotton bud and just clean up the area. Um, if you don't have any IPA, well one, I would recommend getting some, but you could just use some water, but the only issue with that is water takes longer to evaporate uh, than IPA does. So if you're gonna use some water, obviously use a very, very small amount and give it a lot of time to dry before you would obviously then go to test this cartridge. Next, we're gonna put some uh, flux down on the pads. I'm using this different kind of flux here. It's supposed to be a no clean flux. With your soldering iron, heat up the pad for a couple of seconds and then introduce your new uh, solder here. And I would put in quite a good amount of this to create a bit of a uh, blob. You can see here, that's probably just about enough. We're gonna add some more later on to fully secure down the tabs of the battery. So just do this for both sides. Once you've got some solder down, make sure you put the battery in the right orientation. Look for the plus symbol, and the plus symbol is going to be the tab then that touches the top left. So make sure you've got it oriented right, and then you're just going to kind of hold it in place, and then melt the solder on one side. So you can see here, I'm just making sure it's lined up. 
melt the solder on one side so it takes to the uh, tab it might not cover it completely but we're going to add some more solder later on to ensure but i just want to get one side stuck down and then do the same on the other side and you can see here i'm just using um, like a plastic pry tool it's probably not the best to use because it might get hot and melt but use something to push the battery down to ensure that the tabs are then pressed into the solder then once this is down and this is a solid enough connection i'm just going to introduce some more solder to try and build up more of a bank that would sit over the tab and hold it down and make a lot more of a solid connection Once that's done, make sure you give the area a bit of a clean with some IPA. Now I'm going to test to see if uh, this battery is still producing the 3.3 volts, which it should be, but also to test that the solder is making full contact with both terminals. Then I'm just going to give this whole PCB, both sides, uh, a good clean down with some IPA, and then just wipe it off um, and make sure that it's fully dried. You can see here I'm using an air blower that you would kind of use for uh, cleaning lenses for cameras. Uh, it shoots a bit of air under those chips and can push out some of the uh, IP that might be left over. Stick it back in the shell, grab the front, slide it up, flip it over and then screw in the single screw that will then hold it together. So now we are ready to test to make sure that this battery does indeed save, which we're pretty confident it does at this point. So I'm going to put it back into the Game Boy, uh, blast through the intro for Pokemon Gold, and just get to the point where I can do a quick save. And then I'll do the exact same again. Make a save, I'm going to turn the Game Boy off, take the cartridge out, let it sit for a minute or two, um, and then I'll plug it back in. Uh, boot it back up and we should see that the save is therefore available. So that's a kind of very quick way on how you can replace a battery into a game cartridge for Game Boys. I wouldn't recommend any other method, electrical tape, using knives, like there's some horror stories out there. Do not do it that way. This is the only way. I hope you found the video useful and thanks for watching.